Hi everyone, I'm Whitney and welcome back to another episode of The Sitch. Today, we're talking about protein. I'm just eating ground beef straight out of the package these days. It's got a lot of protein. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret about protein. You don't need as much as you think. Despite what your gym buddy or your trainer or The Rock told you, you're likely already eating plenty of protein. The average person needs about 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. Heard that? Kilogram, not pound. Those recommendations you've heard from bodybuilders to eat two grams of protein per pound are more than five times the recommended amount. This is not only outrageous and totally unnecessary, but also potentially seriously harmful to your health, as you'll see in a bit. In fact, your body can only use about 15 to 25 grams of protein at one time for muscle building. The rest of that protein gets broken down and used as fuel, or like everything else you consume, it gets stored as fat. Basically, it doesn't matter if you're eating cookies or broccoli or a T-bone steak, if your body doesn't immediately need that energy, it gets stored as fat. The adequate amount of protein to support all of our bodily functions and muscle mass is only 47 grams for the average 130 pound man or woman, and 65 grams for a person who weighs 180 pounds. That's not a lot. However, the average American male consumes about 102 grams of protein a day, and the average woman consumes around 70 grams. Now you may be thinking, big deal. So what if some of the protein I eat gets burned off? It's better than eating carbs, right? Wrong. For decades now, research has been pointing to the detrimental effects of high protein diets. One study showed that adults aged 50 to 65 who consumed 20% of their diet from protein had four times the risk of developing cancer compared to people who only consumed 10% of their diet from protein. In the blue zones, which have the largest population of people living over 100, protein intake is closer to this 10% rate, unlike the typical Western diet. Animal studies support this association between protein and longevity, showing that rodents placed on low-protein diets live longer. Side note, we've known for a long time that putting mice on a low-calorie diet makes them live about 40% longer. But this is even more remarkable. By specifically restricting just protein or certain amino acids like methionine and the branched-chain amino acids, but not total calories, the mice still live longer and have less disease than those fed a normal chow diet. So why is this happening? Well, researchers believe it's due to the fact that protein increases our body's production of a hormone known as IGF-1, insulin-like growth factor. High levels of this growth-promoting hormone have been associated with higher rates of chronic diseases like breast and prostate cancer. So the more protein you eat, the higher your IGF-1 level. Meanwhile, people with low IGF-1 levels have extremely low rates of cancer and diabetes. For example, there's a group of people living in Ecuador with a condition known as Lerone syndrome. These people are unable to produce IGF-1. A recent study of this group showed that out of 99 adults, only one was diagnosed with cancer over a 22-year period, and none of them developed diabetes. Their relatives, however, with normal IGF-1 levels, had rates of cancer and diabetes of 17% and 6% respectively, similar to the general public. So as you can see, eating a ton of protein isn't all it's pumped up to be. But what about weight loss? I know some of you may not give a damn about chronic disease, but I'm here to tell you, you still don't need a high protein diet. The majority of research shows that when dieters eat the same amount of calories, it doesn't matter if those calories come from carbs or protein, they lose the same amount of weight. What matters is the sustainability of your diet. I don't know about you, but I don't wanna live in a world where I have to avoid bread and pasta and subsist off chicken breasts and protein powder. Ugh, no thanks. I'll be over here happily eating a balanced diet. So to sum it up, for strong, healthy body and proper metabolic functioning, you only need 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight, or about 0.36 grams per pound. Athletes typically need a little more, 1.2 to 1.8 grams of protein per kilogram, or 0.54 to 0.81 grams per pound. Remember, this is athletes we're talking about, not weekend warriors. The average person doing a few studio workouts a week likely only needs slightly above the RDA. 
More important than total protein intake though is protein timing. You wanna get in that 15 to 25 gram dose of protein we talked about earlier between 30 minutes and two hours after your workout for optimal muscle building. Finally, pregnant women and the elderly also have increased protein needs, while people with certain chronic diseases may have higher or lower needs. Talk to a dietitian if you have questions because intake should be individualized. And that's the sitch. I know we covered a lot of ground here, so if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below. I'll try to answer all of them. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more evidence-based nutrition information. I'm Whitney, thanks so much for watching.